Good evening, good afternoon, everyone. I am Hanoch Piven. I am an artist from Israel, and I am here in uh, Tel Aviv, as I said. I'm happy to be invited by the Joy Jumpers School and by the Hags and Cuddles School um, and by Curio Box that uh, put together this, uh, this meeting. Um, thank you very much, the principal, Miss uh, Bella Jaidi, for uh, organizing this. And uh, I want to tell you a little bit about my work and then show a little bit to you demonstrate a little bit how I work and then I would like to invite you to work to create as a family, as individuals. It, it's very important for me to say that this is not just the workshop for the children and the parents will be sitting on the side watching them but it's also a possibility for parents and kids to work together which is a lot of fun. So, um, so I create using everyday objects. Uh, you can see here President Obama. Uh, by the way, this is the print, but the original is there in the background. I have been creating portraits of famous people for many, many, many years using all kinds of objects or of uh, food. Can you, I'm sure you can recognize Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, actually, I was in Ahmedabad at the Gandhi Ashram. Um, this is an American writer, um, Mark Twain, and uh, such more, Armstrong, Louis Armstrong. Um, and you can see that the objects are there to tell something. The objects tell an idea. So that has lots of ideas, like Albert Einstein, might have a light bulb for the nose. And uh, if we go back to President Barack Obama, we can see that the objects communicate in different ways. For example, the eyes of Obama are the American flags. The eyebrows of Obama are the arms of the Statue of Liberty. And it is very clear why they are there. But if we look at the nose and the mouth of Obama, for example, the nose is an object that makes us all think, wait a minute, why it is there? And some people might give ideas for it that are similar to each other, and some people might give ideas that are very unique. And this is the beauty of objects. Each object might mean something different for each one of us. We are not in a science class. We are not, uh, this is not a science project, this is not math. There isn't only one reason why an object might appear on a creation. So uh, remember that, that, for example, objects that you might use to describe something about you might uh, have a very individual meaning. For example, for me, a magnifying glass represents that I am very curious. So if I were to do my self-portrait, I might use it for my glasses. So uh, let me show you. Let me show you. Let let's uh, project now my photograph, my working area. So I would like to invite you all to 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 see that your working area has actually lots and lots of objects. See, I am all ready to work here. Okay. I am all ready to uh, to work. So um, so I'm showing you here. I just want to make sure that everything is in order. Um, 
So, on your, on your board, you can start piling different objects. It's important at the beginning to have many, many, many different uh, options. So, uh, I'm going to pile all kinds of objects. And, um, and first, what we want to do is to, um, to make a simple face. To make a simple face. Maybe choose two buttons or a button and some kind of a gear. And, uh, um, and uh, start making a simple, simple, simple face. Okay? So, um, start with something super, super simple. So, here, I may, um, let, me, let me use um, some kind of a mouth that we, we, will be a little bit more noticeable, okay? So, look, I made a simple, simple, simple face. Now, what's interesting is that this simple face can slowly start changing emotions. We might want to add eyebrows because when we add eyebrows, we can really play with emotions. And then there is something very simple that we can make, which is trial and error. Basically, start trying different possibilities for the mouth and realizing that each object that we will put for the mouth will really create a different expression. We might want to use some kind of color paper for the, um, for the head for the face, then we will have a bit more contrast. And if we're talking about contrast, it's important to show that using, creating the white of the eyes, the eyeballs, allows us to create contrast with the pupils. And this is when it gets really interesting because this is when we can really start creating facial expressions. And look how the expressions here are so easily changing. So uh, when we have pupils, so we can really make a face that is looking on one direction or that is looking on a different direction. So. Allow yourself to play with that, not to rush to create something that has meaning, but first allow yourself just to play with the different possibilities that you can do with what we call trial and error. Try things constantly. See, I put a light bulb, light bulb here, but I don't think it's working very well because it's transparent. Maybe a font, an old font, would be better as a nose. So slowly, slowly allow yourself to enjoy just this thing called trial and error. The idea that each object that we put will have a different, um, a different meaning or a different shape. And some will work better than others. So, let's talk a little bit about how we can use objects to tell something about us. So remember I told you that uh, I feel like I'm a curious person, so I would like to use perhaps one um, magnifying lens for my glasses if I'm trying to make, for example, my portrait. So we have, uh, it's important to me, for me, to hear you, to understand, to watch what you're doing, to watch also what you are thinking. And for that, we have now the live chat that is um, 
apparently now the live chat is uh, is working and on the live chat i would like you if possible to write one object that tells something about one object that um for example uh, you can write on the on the live chat i chose yourself and in that way we were we will slowly we will slowly learn a little bit more about you you can see that i am slowly might not be really exact yet but i'm slowly for example I'm slowly making it better. For example, my eyes are kind of green and brown, one-sided. So, um, see, I'm trying to make sure that I have a nice room here for the mouth. As you can see, I changed my uh, my eyes, right? So, um, uh, I used the green eyes. And also, my eye, my eyebrows are very bushy, see? Now, let's talk a little bit about facial expressions. See, if we look at our face, there are two places on the face that in which white arrives, white exists. One is our eyeballs, right? And another one is our teeth. See, I'm showing you my teeth and my eyeballs. And the reason the white exists in those two places is in order for us to see, to expose to emotion, to understand what is the emotion of the of the face that we are encountering. And this is important for us to know whether the face that we are encountering is somebody that is coming to be nice to us or is somebody that is coming maybe to not be nice to us. So this is something that, um, this is why it's so important when in a easier way. See, I'm now like playing a little bit with my facial expression, um, I feel like I want myself a little bit of hair. I don't have a lot of hair. Um, so I'm thinking maybe, I think um, maybe I can try to use something for the hair. My hair is brown. I have some leaf here. Maybe I can cut a piece of a, a branch, not a leaf. Oh, see, I have this. And by the way, part of the objects that we can use are um, organic materials, stuff that comes from nature that we might find. Okay, so, um, so you're welcome, you know, you might have started working, so you're welcome to start sharing with us some of your choices. For example, uh, the more interaction we have, the more we will, we will be able to, um, to play together. Now, it is important, we are going to glue using a hot glue gun. Here, I have my hot glue gun, but it is important to know that the gluing will happen only at the end because gluing means that we cannot try things anymore. And part of the fun of this type of work is that it accentuates the idea of accepting a process of creation. And accepting that the process of creation takes time, that not any major invention was created in a second, that it just takes 
time. So it's important to allow ourselves to try things, to do trial and error. See, um, for example, I decided that this eggplant, it could be the nose, it could be some kind of a head, but I actually feel like making it like my body, my t-shirt. I love to use I love to use um, black t-shirts. So now I can try different possibilities for my nose. Do I have a button red nose like this? I'm not sure. I think my nose is bigger. Uh, so I'm looking now for my perfect nose. I don't know if the carrot should come back to be my nose. I think my nose is bigger than that. But you know what? It gave me an idea. I actually have very large ears. So uh, here I am adding myself some big ears. And meantime, we read that Brachal Raval uh, tells us that Dia used pasta for my teeth because I love cooking. Thank you, Dia, for being the first one that shared something with us. I'm so appreciative that you guys are, um, are sharing something. And remember, you so, can, because this is taller, I need to solve this problem of uh, making sure that we see the eye that is here below. So maybe uh, I have a little ring here. Uh, see, I made it now a bit bigger. Um, so I have more room for the um, to see to see the eyes. Um, and I keep trying things. Does a little a little pupil like pupil helps? Yes, it does. And what if I want to put something but it keeps falling? Oops, this button. I'm trying to put the button here, but it keeps falling. Well, there is something called um, blue tack. Photographers have blue tack. Um, it's some kind of a paddy. I'm sure you know it. And you can stick things. And if you don't have blue tack, you can use any kind of simple play doh will do. So um, this will help me to glue to hold things. So see, it's getting now better. Uh, it's easier for me to hold that way than I the pupils. Oops, this one fell. So I'm going to put also a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, blue tack. And I still feel like I want to try better um, better nose. Um, so I'm going to try now. This is a little box of a container of a toothbrush. Oh my god, this is a really, really long nose. And I have also some kind of a red pepper. Is a red pepper a good nose? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, let's see. Um, I can try a little um, strawberry. And um, I can try an apple. I'm becoming a clown, I feel, and I don't want to, I don't want to be uh, represented as a clown, but let me see. Let me see. This is the moment to bring um, some more objects. Um, let's see. I can also put some kind of a heart as a nose. Mm. I kind of like this one. Light bulb. But you know what? I, I have a feeling I know what's the best presentations. So uh, I feel, let's see, let's leave those, uh, those teeth for now. And again, uh, if I show you my creation from above, you see, Lee? so um, I could try to do, to do this. So I feel like now it might be better like this. 
So this is my creation. Let's so are you working? Are you guys working? Anybody can give me some feedback whether you are working and what you're doing? Anybody would be nice enough to give us a, a little bit of feedback? Because as I said, I'm here all by myself. That's my, my feeling. All right, so um, so so here I'm getting ready to finish my um, my creation. Maybe I will try to use something else. Um, okay, so something else for the eyebrows. Maybe something like this for the eyebrows and. Um, so this is kind of my self-portrait, um, the one that I made now. My uh, remote control that I use for my presentations. And also, I kind of like to... My wife might say that I'm very controlling. I don't know. I like to, to control certain things. But, uh, you know, actually... I feel we are all encountering now a world in which we are more uh, encountering lack, lack of control uh, and confusion. By the way, this is, uh, this is a little, um, a little uh, bracelet and uh, it is wonderful to how it can change. And this is uh, when you have a flexible object, you can constantly use it to change, um, to change facial expressions. So, um, so you can see that I'm playing with that a little bit right now. Um, one more thing I would like to, um, oh, and by the way, there are more objects here that, that talk about me, like for example, my big ears and my greenish brownish eyes. Um, there you go. Okay. Now it is important um, to know that when you make a face, you have to look like you. I'm going to put this one on the side. It's not about creating a face that looks like you. It can be more about, first of all, about playing. We play, we are more creative. So this is why I believe that uh, art should be playful. That art should make it a creative space, should make it clear that there is no right or wrong, that it is. So, um, so for example, sometimes um, learning to play again, is about the exploration, about not knowing where I'm going. And um, when we don't know where we're going, we might suddenly discover something, something new. And uh, especially when we are talking about young kids, it's important not to give a preconception of what is the right solution and what is the wrong solution. Once we um, have a playful, open space, artistic space, so we might start to discover different possibilities. So uh, a, great, um, a great exercise to do is to find faces in the world I'm sure you've seen faces uh, in, uh, in cars, but uh, as this smiley shows us, every time that we see two dots and a line below, we are seeing some kind of a face. Okay, so we have a face here. And once we have two things that can be eyes, anything that we put below will become mouth. 
So, um, and as human beings, we are, our brain is trained to look for, uh, for faces. So this is why we really want to see faces. And, um, and it is a very easy way. This is a very easy way for kids to create. To, to create faces. I mean, there are kids that maybe at the age of two years, they cannot draw faces yet, or maybe a year and a half. They cannot draw with a pencil, but they can place objects to create, uh, to create faces and expressions. So again, this is very easy to, um, to use flexible objects to create expressions create uh, somebody that is a little bit uh, maybe sad or puzzled, somebody that is uh, giving us uh, some kind of uh, very surprised look, or maybe somebody that is very kind to us and, um, and is giving us some kind of a kiss um, or some kind of a big, big, big smile. So um, let's see if um, any of you might have uh, might have uh, put something on the Padlet. Oh, I, I'm starting to see new ones. One second. soft purple feather and he's laying down in bed and caressing 
caressing his nose with the soft and tickly purple feather. And then a bird comes and the bird wants to use the feather as a wing, as one of its wings. And a cat wants to use the feather as his whiskers. And then a porcupine who is very thorny and sad wants to use the feather to be a little bit softer. And an ant wants to use the feather to windsor on a cucumber. And a little centipede wants to use the feather to lift weights because it's the only thing that the little centipede can lift. And an owl wants to use the feather to write the story of his life. And then a little doggy, the neighbor's doggy, wants to use the feather as its tail, as her tail. And a tiger wants to use the feather to clean his teeth after eating the doggy from the previous day. And there is a big mess, and then a little flea grabs the feather and tickles a lady elephant. And what happens when you tickle a lady elephant? Well, you know, the lady elephant sneezes, and the feather flew away and away. And there is a feather flying. And Jacob and all the animals, they watch how the feather flies away. And when Jacob goes to sleep, when the kid goes to sleep, he wonders where did the feather go? And at the end of the book, there is an envelope. And inside the envelope, what do we have? We get the feather. There is the purple feather, the soft and nice purple feather. So this is the end of my book, The Purple Feather, Noxascula in Hebrew, or La Pluma Violeta in Spanish, 25 years old. And as I was drawing, one day next to the creation, I saw a box of matches and that gave me the idea to use the matches as a mustache and I actually created the picture I'm looking for it I created the picture of the Iraq Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein whom you probably don't know because you are five years but you can see that his mustache is made out of matches. So this was the first creation that I used using everyday objects. And I realized that this was a way for me to create, that I could really make better pictures using objects than drawing them with a pencil and with a brush. So, um, so in a way, I discovered my own way of doing something. And I think that uh, you're very young still, um, Dia, but uh, when you're older, there might be some things that you do better, and there might be some things that you have a little bit more hardships with. And it happens to all of us. And, um, and I think, you know, that there are things that we will improve and we will do better, but uh, there are things that we will always come to us very easily, and, uh, and it's important to, to understand what, where are the places that I do better, where are the places that I have harder time, and, um, you know, so this is called knowing yourself, learning to understand yourself, to know yourself, and this is what happens to us when we are in school. This is why we go to school, to learn to know ourselves better for us to see all your creations. So, um, and I hope you keep being creative. And, 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 and because when we are creative, we enjoy life more. We, we enjoy, oops, we enjoy the present. We are alive when we are creative. Uh, thank you, Dia, and thank you, Yad, for writing some nice things. And, um, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, 
another time, maybe when the pandemia ends, I will be able to visit Ahmedabad one more time. Meantime, I'm in Israel, far from you, but uh, somehow this allows us all to be closer. So bye-bye.